Before becoming the commercial behemoth it is now, Pokemon started as a small game, made by a small team. That team was still struggling with Game Boy development, when it released the first games in the series, Pokemon Red and Green. As a consequence, those games were full of glitches, and most systems' inner workings were unclear. The best example are the catching mechanics. They are confusing, mostly hidden, and don't seem to make sense at all. On the programming side, they are easy to read. They consist of a lot of conditions put back to back. But there is a reason why the subsequent games quickly moved away from that system and relied on a mathematical formula instead. While a formula is harder to read, both tweaking each element and testing results are easier. Having a stack of conditions brings in a ton of unforeseen consequences and hard to control elements. Like what, for example? To know, we need to dig in and take a closer look at the catching mechanics in Pokemon Gen 1. Although I know what doesn't bring unforeseen consequences. Becoming a patron! It allows you full access to behind the scenes, vote on the next content I make, and even a mention in a video! We are in small committee right now, but anyone is free to join. Please consider it if you enjoy this video. There is one core number when it comes to capturing Pokémon. The catch rate. Its values goes up to 255, and the higher the catch rate, the easier the Pokémon is to capture. As you have probably guessed, rare Pokémon tend to have a low catch rate. This number is fixed per Pokémon species, and is not a factor you can directly modify. There are three other factors you have an influence on though, and those will change your chances of a successful capture. The Pokémon's current status, its HP, and which bowl you use. But not all factors are created equal, because there is one that influences the other two significantly, the bowl used. Let me show you with statuses. The status effects in Pokémon are separated in two tiers. The first one regroups Sleep and Freeze, and the second Poison, Paralysis, and Burn. The impact of each tier is a flat increase on your catch rate, and depends, like I mentioned, on your bowl. Now, this system is fine and makes sense. The issue here is that status effects are too good. If you use Sleep, you can get an increase to up to 21% when using an Ultra Bowl. This is a flat catch chance increase applied to every single Pokémon in the game. I get that a sleeping Pokémon would be easier to catch, but this removes the need for any kind of strategy. Just put the Pokémon to sleep and you immediately get a 1 out of 5 chance to capture. But before celebrating too early, we should take a look at hit points. On its own, lowering a Pokémon's HP does nothing. It is only when combined with balls that the system has an impact. See, every ball has an HP threshold. For the Pokéball and the Ultra Ball, that threshold is around one-third, whereas the Great Ball's threshold is around half. Lowering a Pokémon's hit points will increase your catch chance, until you hit the threshold. Once you are past it, damage dealt has no impact whatsoever. If you ever try to get a Pokémon's health to the lowest possible amount, well, you were wasting your time and taking unnecessary risks. The third and most important factor, the bowl used, is the main reason why Gen 1's catching mechanics are so confusing. The moment you throw a ball, a random number is generated, which will be used in all calculations moving forward. That number is between 0 and 255 for a Pokéball, 200 for a Great Ball, and 150 for an Ultra Ball. This seems to make sense. The Pokéball is worse than the Great Ball, which is worse than the Ultra Ball. Right? Well, for starters, if you try to capture a Pokémon with a catch rate higher than your Ball number, you don't get an extra benefit. For calculations, the catch rate is capped at the ball number. 
Meaning, if you use an Ultra Ball to catch common Pokémon, you are just wasting money. Second, there is a specific number used in the HP formula. The Ball Modifier. That number is 8 for every ball. Except for the Great Ball, where it is 12. But what does that change? Well, it is the reason the Great Ball's HP threshold occurs earlier. And, more importantly, it means that the HP factor for the Great Ball is 33% stronger than any other ball, making it stronger than other balls by design. And finally, we get to randomness. Due to a weird mix of developer oversight and technical limitations, the numbers randomly generated are only random most of the time. Which leads to some strange interactions that are the final nail in the coffin for the Gen 1 catching mechanics. Basically, the Pokeballs are perfect. They always work as intended. They suck, but purposefully so. The Great Balls underperform very slightly for high catch rate Pokémon, but overperforms for low catch rate Pokémon. The Ultra Balls underperform significantly at high HP, but compensate by overperforming at low HP. They are also worse than Pokeballs for high catch rate Pokémon. Yeah, really. Before we get to the ultimate catching strategy, based on the data gathered so far, there are two balls I have not mentioned yet. The first is the Master Ball. That ball is very simple. If you use it, the game bypasses any calculations and you succeed automatically. You may have heard it still has a 1 out of 256 chance to miss. That is false. The 1 out of 256 chance or 0.4% to miss only applies to moves. See, in Gen 1, even a move with a theoretical 100% accuracy could miss, one time out of 256, due to a programming oversight. But the Master Ball check works differently and is thus unaffected. Second, we have the Safari Ball. For all intents and purposes, the Safari Ball is an Ultra Ball. Every check in place that looks for an Ultra Ball also looks for a Safari Ball. But wait, didn't we say the Ultra Ball performs badly at max HP and its main benefit is the status effect bonus? Doesn't that mean the Ultra Ball is absolutely terrible if you can't use moves on the opposing Pokémon? Yes and yes. The rare Pokémon exclusive to the Safari Zone can be a hassle to capture because of that very reason. The best encounter chance you can get is 4%, and once you do encounter them, your chance of a successful capture is a measly 6.5%. And no, throwing stones or bait is not worth it. There is still another weirdness in Gen 1 catching, and that is the wobbling mechanic. If you ever threw a ball at a legendary Pokémon, you may have gotten the message, you missed the Pokémon, and assumed you couldn't catch it yet. But that message is simply Gen 1 unique version of the Pokémon escaping the ball without wobbling. Even more interesting is that the formula used to calculate wobbles does not have randomness to it whatsoever. Meaning, the number of wobbles you get is actually a rough indicator of your chances to capture the Pokémon. If you don't change the status or HP of the wild Pokémon between throws, you will always get the same number of wobbles. As a result, the very system that was supposed to add tension to capture does the exact opposite. If you try to catch a legendary bird where you get no wobbles, the moment the ball connects, you already know you have succeeded, removing any suspense. Now that we know the bizarre ways Gen 1 catching works, what is the best strategy to catch Pokémon? Well, against most wild encounters, all you need is a Paras or Parasect with Spore, a stack of Great Balls, and you are golden. Spore has 100% chance to make the Pokémon sleep. The strength of this status 
combined with the power of the Great Bull at max HP and its overall versatility regarding catch rates makes this ball the absolute best by far. It doesn't have the theoretical best chance to catch, but it is high enough to remove the hassle of capture, without help from missing no duplicating Master Balls. How do I know that? I completed a living Pokedex challenge in Pokemon Blue. I caught them all. And I can tell you by experience, the moment I got a Parasect, most of my Great Balls became an instant success. The Ultra Ball still has its use though. Combining it with Sleep against Legendary Pokemon is the most efficient. You don't even need to lower HP. The added catch chance is marginal compared to the more than 20% you get from status alone. Before going down the rabbit hole on Gen 1 catching mechanics, I always thought the schoolyard tricks of holding B, A and B, B and up, or mashing B while using a ball were silly. Turns out, they make as much sense as the actual mechanics. I just wish I could tell my younger self that. Also, the Mew glitch. Imagine being the kid who actually knows how to get Mew. Anyway, Game Freak learned their lesson, fixed every mistake, and catching in Gen 2 is perfect. So it is time to play a game. Working or busted? Yeah, I have a video on that topic as well. Hugely recommended if you want a good laugh. Thank you very much for the time you have given me, and I wish you a wonderful day.